Okay, so uh, nobody knows Ruby. This is basically uh, little things, and you probably know many of these, but I'm sure almost everybody will learn something. Um, so first of all, um, I'm just late to the party, but I only learned this yesterday. In IRB and in Pry, you can get the last evaluated value back um, with an underscore. Um, then another um, great, um, if you're talking about obscure Ruby stuff, is the flip-flop operator. So um, watch me live code here. Uh, so I have this uh, list of a number of strings. And then have this, so, so what's happening here? So basically this flip-flop, the dot dot there, that's not a range, that's a flip-flop. So it's, a, it's like a, a switch, and the first um, statement, so the first expression turns the switch on, and the second turns the switch back off. So you see what's happening? It's pretty cool, right? Can Java do this? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, okay, other obscure Ruby syntax, the block local variables. So we all know that if the variable already existed, then inside the block it gets redefined, but it doesn't have to be that way. You just put semicolon and the name of the variable, and then it's scoped to that block, and afterwards you get the old one again. Pretty cool, right? Can Java do this? Don't think so. <laughs> Okay, so here's another thing. So this is a, a bit of a, of a complicated regular expression, the one at the top. Um, yeah, sorry if it's a bit small, but there was a bit more code on this slide. Um, so this is actually from the act, uh, as taggable on gem. Um, now the thing is, like explaining a regular expression like that is a pain in the ass. But if you put the x at the end of the regular expression, you can actually put white space and comments inside there, and it'll just get stripped out, and it's still like, so these two regular expressions are the same. They just uh, they serve to, to extract tags that have spaces and then with like quotes around it. Yeah, a couple other things here. So that's uh, where the cursor is now. Zero with look ahead. I guess I don't really have to explain that kind of stuff. That's that's pretty basic, right? Um, <laughs> so Ruby regular expression, super cool. Um, yeah. So these um, Unicode literals in strings. So you know in Ruby 1.8, strings were basically character arrays. Um, so you had that already that hexadecimal way of putting specific bytes in your string, but in Ruby 1.9, they're, they're basically a code point or character arrays, and so you can put a Unicode character with a specific hexadecimal Unicode code point right in the string. Um, related is that we got this, these two enumerators um, to enumerate over the characters or the code points of a string, so in Ruby 1.8, you would have to write like split on, a reg on an empty regular expression, or you would have to unpack the Unicode code points, whereas now we basically get nice, and they're, they're enumerators, so you can do like drop and select and then whatever on it. Um, and the, the fun thing is that if you then start using these Unicode literals in regular expressions, you can define ranges of Unicode characters. So let's see how that works. So these are actually all the Unicode code point ranges that contain Chinese, Japanese, Korean characters. So if we map those to strings that have those like range expressions, turn them into regular expressions, and now, bam, we scan our string and we get all the Chinese characters out. Uh, a couple more fun things here to note. Um, so when you have an integer and you do two s, you can put a base to turn it into a hexadecimal in this case. Um, also, when you get a method object, in this case the new method of re re rejects, it responds to two proc, so you can just pass it in as if it's a block. Um, so that's fun. And reject union, really cool. Like just putting re regular expressions together and, and basically with pies between them, so they're, they're like odd. Um, Okay, time's running out fast. Um, speed this up a bit. So on the command line, Ruby's a bit like arc. So you can, you can do it like this. You can just read standard input and do something with it. But um, you can also get this dash n, and then it'll go through every line. Um, and every line will get assigned to a dollar underscore. Um, if you want to output that, then, uh, <laughs> well, I don't know what's going on there. Then you can use p, and then it'll output dollar underscore again at the end of the loop. Um, you can do even more fun stuff if you have like separated with tabs. You can put the A in there to auto split it, and then it gets separated to dollar F as the arrays of the separate fields. So here I'm counting the number of fields of each line, and then with, with F you can put the, the delimiter. So here, um, yeah, okay, that's uh, 
Time's pretty much up. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. I think you're so far leading uh, because you mentioned Java most often. <laughs> <laughs>